Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purge Views. Christmas Tree is obviously a Christmas themed board game where each of the players is going to be building their own Christmas tree. You're going to be doing so by drafting cards, which means I'm going to take, I have a can of cards, I'm going to choose one to play and pass the rest around the board, and I'll be getting my next hand, or I'll be choosing a card from my neighbor, and that's going to continue to go on. You can play three rounds in a game, at the end you're going to have your beautiful Christmas tree, but you're going to score points as you're going along for the different ornaments, or gingerbread man, or lights that you put on your tree, and certain patterns, and every round the players are going to pick, and say you're playing with four players, those four people will set the objectives for the round, and those cards will score. And then at the end of the game, you're going to score in a, in a universal way for the lights and gingerbread men and the candies that you're putting on there, etc. And when everybody's done, they have their own unique Christmas tree. Very interesting game. I do wish the components were better. They're kind of a letdown a little bit. I, I would, in there to come with the second edition, it's really not that great. I would like to see a deluxe Kickstarter version of this game. I think it's good enough. I think it's worthy of it. Now, the scoring is a little wonky. It takes a little bit to get used to because that's what this game is all about. You're putting these things down not to make your tree look attractive. You're doing it to score points, which they're, they're trying to say by scoring points, it is looking more attractive. And, and everything you do is a decision. If I put this here, I'm negating these points to score these points. Am I going to score more of these? I got to put these other two cards and I got to find these cards in the drafting. So, and, and as you put more uh, branches and more cards on your tree, you're narrowing down your options that you're going to have, and you're hoping it all comes into fruition. We can score more points than the other people. Very interesting drafting game. It's lighter, but the scoring needs to be understood as you go into it. Very, very neat theme. It's one of the top uh, two Christmas games I play. Probably this or Santa's Workshop are the two best ones, and you can't go wrong with either one. Keeper for us, we're going to play this every Christmas season. Here's Christmas tree. I should point out this is the second edition. I think there's a little differences between the two editions. The box isn't the best quality. It's okay. It's better than mass market stuff. It isn't great. We got a rule book, which we'll take a look at in a few minutes. No insert of any kind. Let me spread this out. We'll take a look at the components. Here are the components for the game. So you're going to have this puzzle piece for each of the players. You'll have enough to play four. It'll go through. Uh, create a Christmas tree. You can see the outline and a place to put the cards. I'm going to get these cards. These will be what you're kind of drafting there in the game. They're very thin. You can see they have like gingerbread men and ornaments and some things on them that go together and they create a bulb on them. They're pretty nice, but just very thin. I wish they were thicker than that. These will be the objective cards. They're the same shape uh, for no reason whatsoever. Uh, they kind of have the icons on them. A little small with the, the font, but not too bad. And this will be the victory points. They look like snowflakes that you have. These are fairly nice. Um, but this is a game that I, I wish it was on Kickstarter. I wish the components were better. Uh, it'll do. It'll do. But it's not mind-blowing whatsoever. Although, you can see here that once you have the tree and you have some ornaments on it, it does kind of come to life here and kind of looks kind of neat. So you can see how uh, definitely... Um, it, it will look really neat. Everybody's going to have a customized tree when they're done. Here's the rule book. You can see it kind of gives you a little bit of a story on the front of it. And you're gonna t the three different de difficulties, a picture of the components, and a little bit about setup. You're going to have the normal family game, which I'd recommend to most players when they're playing, and final evaluation and how to score. You can see there's examples and pictures, and really scoring is going to be a large portion of this. So a few rules if you want to add in some uh, objective uh, or advanced game. Then you have some rules for two-player, which I don't know if I'd recommend this game two-player. But um, then you have kind of a valuation of that, some tips when you're playing. And on the back of this, will go over each of the objective cards and tell you how they score. This is a good reference. You might have to you know, pass this around a little bit when we were looking at it. But I feel like the rule book was very good, very clear. It's a very simple game. Scoring is really what you got to master. So this part right here is going to be the difficult part. I wish it was all on one page. It's not, but it's a minor quibble at best. Each player will be given a Christmas tree like this. At the end of the game, it will be full of different ornaments, so each of the spaces will be filled. You will play the game for three rounds. You'll place seven cards each round, and you have all 21 at the end of the game. After each round, you will score. During setup, everybody will be given four objective cards. Each player will choose one and play it face down. And then before the round begins, everybody will 
reveal the four objective cards they play, and that's what you're going to score for this round. And normally give you points for certain colors, or going to be first or second with certain things, or you want the ornaments in a certain row or diagonal, etc., or certain patterns. That's kind of what you're doing. It's a little bit of a puzzle. Each round, you're going to be dealt eight cards. You're going to take one, play it face down, and give the rest to somebody on your left, and you'll receive cards from your right. You'll play that singular card down anywhere that you want on the board. They do not have to be connected to it when you're playing a card, and you hope to meet the patterns of the objectives. So you might draft some cards, and you might have something like this. Now, when you play it, you can play it up or down in whatever direction that you want to be. There are candies that you can put on your tree, just kind of depending on how you want to score them. And there aren't any restrictions, like the red and blue bulb can go together. You may not score as many points. You're going to have the gingerbread men also that can go down. And you don't have to place anything. Maybe I could place it over here, and etc. So on top of each round of scoring these, at the end of the game, you're going to score uh, different aspects. So here are the gingerbread men. You're going to see how many points, 2, 4, 8, 12. And you're going to look, and each one of his, he wants a circle by him, or he wants a star by his leg, or a circle. So, for example, if I had placed him here, there's a circle ornament here, I'll get two points for that. If I was able to put this comb, honeycomb right here, that's what he's requiring by his arm, then I would get four points. I'd, re I'd meet two of the requirements. That's how the gingerbread men are going to work. As for the candies, you're going to get points based on the number of stars. So this candy right here, if I can place it, will give me five points. This ornament right here will give me one point. In addition, you're going to get points for these bulbs. If you look here, I have a blue bulb that matched, and I have a red bulb that matched. That's going to be two points each. Now, the red and the blue that go together, that's not going to give me any points because the colors don't match. At the end of the game, whoever has the most points is going to be the winner of Christmas Tree. Who should buy this game? Anyone looking for a Christmas themed board game. This is one of the two best ones on the market and one I can easily, it's one simpler than the other one, say this workshop. Easy drafting game. So the scoring is going to be a little much if you haven't played some games. Like the mass marketing people will have a little trouble with the scoring. There are ways to kind of dumb that down a little bit to make it a little bit easier to score. Now, if you're wanting a card drafting game, I think this game also sells in that regard. It's a really neat card drafting game that also seconds as a Christmas game. And the scoring is unique enough. It does have some really tough decisions. It's almost like that pressure luck you got to do in a drafting game. You don't know exactly which one to get this round or next round or the round after that. So you need to be careful about what you're putting out there and not close yourself off or go for that one big score. Or do you? Because that one score pays off. Maybe you'll do really, really well. And that's the decision this game is going to give you. So this one was a winner for us. I like it quite a bit. I do have the second edition. I really wish there was like a primo deluxe edition coming out of this because I would purchase it in a heartbeat.